All right, hi everybody. Welcome to the Bio2 lab room. And what you'll do is you'll see that there's all these lab tables and at each lab table, depending on the lab, there will be microscopes or specimens out and there will be lab cards. And I've already pointed out those lab cards are also online. And this goes all the way around the room. So all the way to the back cabinets as well. And again, depending on the specimens, uh, that we have for that week. We'll have different things out. The museum is located right here and that gives you a view of sort of the whole room and What you'll do is you'll start anywhere in the room really but station one is typically Located right here and what you're going to do is you're going to take your lab packet and basically fill out What's on the lab cards? All right, so let's uh, start at station one and again, here on the left, you have the lab card. And on the right, you have your lab packet. And what we're going to do, first of all, remember, taxonomy is always fair game. So you want to make sure you always know the taxonomy for anything that we're looking at. And then it's pretty simple because each station number, station number one, for example, goes along with a card or two. And that information is in usually a different color that corresponds to the question and you're simply copying the answer down to those questions and it's right on the card and you might find that writing it uh, abbreviating it or, or making sure you just write the keywords like stromatolite will help you write the answer down faster because remember you have several questions to answer in just a short period of time when it says label a diagram or figure we're going to give you that figure but cover up the answers and just ask you what is a or what is b we're not going to have you actually draw it okay another example for example here on station two we're going to ask you to be able to identify these particular shapes a coccyx a bacillus a helical bacteria and a filamentous bacteria. We're only asking you those particular shapes, but you'll notice that each specimen is labeled as to what it is, the genus and species. So you'll see we have Spirillium, Streptococcus, Clostridium, and Oscillatoria here. And the question is, well, do you need to know that? And in this particular case, the answer is no. You only need to know the genus and species if the specimen causes a particular disease or environmental problem that we're discussing in lab or that we mentioned in lecture. That being said, Clostridium titani you'll need to know, but that comes up at a later station. Every now and then I hear a student say, just memorize everything. But I suggest you pay attention again, make sure you read what it says you need to know. So at this station, you need to be able to recognize bacterial colonies you don't need to know all these different types and trying to learn that just overwhelms you with more stuff that you don't need to know. You need to remember if you haven't watched my video on how to study, you got to play the game. All right. Now on this particular station, once again, you got to always make sure you know the taxonomy, but in this case, we're talking about this particular organism called Treponema pallidum, which causes the disease called syphilis. So in this particular case, you do in fact need to know the genus and species, the name of the organism, and you also need to know the disease it causes. And those are laid out in these particular questions. So make sure you also know that in some cases I might ask, name this organism, Treponema pallidum, but in other cases I might say, what disease does this cause? And that would be syphilis in this case. So you need to make sure you are also answering the question that we ask. I told you most students end up taking pictures of everything. And this is a picture of treponema that I took using my cell phone. And you can see it's maybe not all that good. And you might be tempted to think, well, why would I do that? Why don't I just go to Google images? And you find that you can find way better images on Google images of treponema. This is what I found, for example. But the problem is what I'm going to show you on the practicum isn't going to look anything like these specialized artistic versions of it. So 
there you go, play the game once again. Okay, so you can fill your packet out in lab or at home, but what I suggest you do is make sure you spend your time in lab looking through the microscopes and making sure you know the specimens and quizzing yourself on whether you can answer those questions or not because you only get a certain amount of time in lab and you want to use your lab time very wisely. The students that do the best in the class are the students that make the best use of lab time.